Hey everyone, it's Michael Goosebumps fan today. I have the last review of the Lawn Gnomes books for you. Uh, I have read the, I guess you want to say the first three. There's really one original book from the classic series called Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes. I loved it to death. I thought it was so good. Did a review here on the channel in case you want to check that out. I reviewed the TV book where they took the episode from the old TV show and they adapted it into its own little novel about 60 pages long. I reviewed that TV book. Really, really enjoyable. It is just straight up almost identical to the original book. So, that's pretty cool. I also reviewed the Scary Summer Goosebumps graphics book, which was the third of that series. Mainly just talking about, uh, you know, there's three different stories in there. There's Welcome to Camp Jelly Jam, Ghost Speech, and there's also an adaptation to comic form of Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes. And I really dug that. I think it was a really, really well-made uh, adaptation to comic form of a Goosebumps story for at least the Lawn Gnomes. The art style was good and everything. And then there was an original sequel at some point from the Most Wanted series, which is this book review I'm doing, Goosebumps Most Wanted Book Number 1, Planet of the Lawn Gnomes by R.L. Stein. Uh, of course, the Most Wanted series kind of had a first book. It was called Goosebumps Wanted the Haunted Mask. It's a book I rave over all the time on this channel. But Goosebumps Wanted the Haunted Mask was like a big 230-page book, and the rest of the Most Wanted series are just about... Um, like 120 pages. Your typical size of a Goosebumps book, as you can tell from the spine. I love the spines on these books. Do you? I don't know. I'm like, I feel like I'm the only person that really cares about the most wanted spines. I think they're the best looking spines on Goosebumps. But uh, Planet of the Lawn Gnomes, the biggest thing with this, I read it many years ago. My grandmother gave me a copy in 2012 or 2013. I've always been a Goosebumps fan when I was growing up, but not as hardcore in my later years. Um, kind of all came back over the years. I read this when she first gave it to me around 2013 or so. <clears throat> I don't think these had been out for very long by the time she gave them to me. There was this and How I Met My Monster, which I think is book three in the series. Son of Slappy, which is book number two. She gave me that for Most Wanted. She gave me a lot of Most Wanted books that were out at like Barnes & Noble and stuff at the time. And this is one of those copies of a book that she gave me that I have just kept for a long time. I was a little hesitant about ever getting around to reading this and talking about it, uh, just because of weird, nostalgic, sad, depressing memories about her being gone and whatnot. But this book is a lot better than I remember it being. I used to remember hating the ending of that book, this book. And I gotta tell you, it does a whole lot more for me this time around. I actually think I enjoyed a lot more. The title, Planet of the Lawn Gnomes, it works and then the finale happens and it's kind of a... I don't know. I don't like it for the finale, but I do like the finale overall. Uh, I'll get to the basic plot. I'm just trying to give you my little setup premises. Where should I start with this review? I guess I will just go ahead and delve into the plot. Of course, this is spoiler free, so don't worry too much. Um, Goosebumps, most wanted Planet of the Lawn Gnomes. Essentially, our main character's name is Jay, and he has kind of a bad history playing pranks and mean things on people all the time. He's not like a bully or anything, he just does pranks. One of my favorite things he talks about doing in the book that I thought was so funny was that a neighbor in his previous house, neighborhood, whatever, had their window open and he went into their backyard, got their ladder from their backyard, and put the ladder up against the side of the house to make it look like somebody had gotten into the house through the window. That really honestly had me laughing out loud. I thought it was a very funny, cute little prank that no one should have gotten in trouble for something like that. But anyway, Jay and his family, because of his kind of pranks and antics like that, they had to move out of their old neighborhood and out of their old house and go to this new area now. But the thing is, with this new neighborhood, there's a ton of lawn gnomes. They're everywhere. Every house has like three of them sitting outside of their yard. The thing is, over time, and again, this is like half of the book. <laughs> there's not really any encounter with a gnome at all, aside from seeing them in the neighborhood and whatnot. He starts to notice some of the gnomes are moving. Not like he sees the moves, but like if he left the neighborhood for a little bit, or left a street or his house or something, he comes back, the gnomes happen to be moved or they're in a different spot in the front yards and stuff. Very interesting. And I'm curious about how much people would say that the canon from the first book is kept here. I don't think there's a whole lot when it comes to the gnomes, but I really dug this. Again, when I read Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes the other week, it was a huge surprise for me. I could not believe how much I loved that book. It was like a almost like a slappy dummy type book almost a Not a Living Dummy type book in a different way with a different monster. And I loved it. I thought it was so good. The gnomes are some of my favorite monsters now. But this one kind of has different gnomes. I don't like the cover art with the gnomes either. I don't like them looking like this. I like the old gnomes from the old Tim Jacobus art. Just thought I'd throw that out there. But this, these Most Wanted covers I do like. I think the Most Wanted covers are pretty cool looking most of the time. Anyway, uh, so Jay has like kind of this little bit of a weird situation with the gnomes moving around. He gets a little panicky over that. Uh, there is a situation where the kid that he meets named Elliot, and they go out to a quagmire, which is kind of like almost like a, almost like a pit, 
out there. It, it, it's a really scary scene. I mean, to be in a kid's book, that was a horrific scene. A really horrific scene that honestly was just kind of scary and genuinely tense. Now, the thing is, I talked about the, the ending of this book, the plot twist. Um, again, I won't reveal it, spoiler-free channel, but the thing for me is that it's so similar to another book that is famous from the old classic series that everybody else loves. I won't tell you the title because I don't want to spoil it for you in case you read this one and you think it's a little similar to that ending for that book. But if you've read the book I'm talking about from the old classic series, you probably know <laughs> that that particular ending I've always hated about that particular classical 90s book from Goosebumps. I love the rest of the book, just don't like that particular ending. It's the opposite with this book. I actually, well not really the opposite, but this book I actually enjoyed the whole thing, including the ending. I think the execution of the ending here works so much better for me than the classic book. It's kind of a mixture of two different classic books, endings, plot twists. You know, it, it's, I don't know. I like it. I like it a lot more here. I think the execution for here makes much more sense for the kind of story they're going for. The title does have a little bit of an issue for me, but overall it's not false advertisement. It's not like the... Uh, there's a couple of books I've read in the past from Goosebumps that uh, Son of Slappy, the next book in the series, is a fantastic example of that. The cover has Slappy the Ventriloquist Dummy and then a smaller Slappy on his lap and it's called Son of Slappy. And that book has completely nothing to do with two dummies at all. It's not in the book. It was a lie. It was a straight up lie. And it pisses me off when Goosebumps pulls that because it's, it's a marketing, it's false advertisement in my opinion. So people like myself that went into Son of Slappy many years ago, and when I also reread it last year for the channel, I was super excited. I was super really, really, really excited for that, and it just crushed me. It was terrible. <laughs> I mean, I already knew because I read it before, but the ending and everything and the execution of that story are just so sloppy as a Slappy book. It doesn't work. But um, and then to have Slappy World now be so good the way it is kind of makes up for how bad Son of Slappy was. But anyway, I don't really have more to say about Planet of the Lawn Gnomes. I really like Jay. I think his whole prankster antics are really cool. I love getting into the background of what he exactly did in his past that they made the family have to move about three weeks ago. So I really dig it. If you haven't read Planet of the Lawn Gnomes, you're really missing out. It's a really, really, really solid little read. You don't have to read the first book if you want to just delve into this one. Again, not a, not a whole lot of the lore from the first book is kind of captured and maintained here. But this is fun for a standalone book. It's fun in general. I've really enjoyed the Lawn Gnomes books, and I kind of hope we get another one from Slappy World or something. We're getting another Monster Blood book, so I hope we get another one of the Lawn Gnomes type stories. But they're kind of the, they're kind of the same thing, you know. It's kind of like Monster Blood. There's not too many variations on what you can do with Monster Blood. As long as it's entertaining, I don't really care. I don't think most people care as long as it's entertaining, but this one... Really solid. I really, really enjoyed this. Not as much as Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes. It wasn't as amazing as that, but I had read it before, so kind of the surprises and stuff were already something that was kind of spoiled for me. But I still really dug it. I think there was a lot of really good twists here, a lot of surprises here, a lot of cool things, especially the ending. The ending is really, really wild. Really, really, really wild. Um, the Lawn Gnomes at times seem more threatening here than they do in the first book, which is interesting, and I enjoy that. But anyway, when it comes to Goosebumps Most Wanted, book number one, Planet of the Lawn Gnomes, if I had to rate this book on a five-star basis, I'd give it like a really high four out of five stars. It's not perfect, but I do really dig it. I do enjoy it quite a bit. It's one of my favorite from Most Wanted now. But anyway, what are your thoughts? Put them down below, guys. Thank you for watching. And uh, I'd love to hear everything you have to say about the Lawn Gnomes books. It's pretty cool stuff. I really dug it. I'm really surprised by how much I enjoyed this. But anyway, uh, may the Lord Jesus Christ bless you guys today, and goodbye.